because everyone was just like they just had a lot of fun hanging out with me and her because of that. Oh, we're live. We're live, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no country for old, but what? The title? <laughs> I just got the notification. I don't know. I have no idea. I love. I love it when. I love it when the live like turns on and we're in the middle of like a quick thought. Okay. Woohoo! It's episode 342 of the weekly from Pocket Now and Next Day Developers, recorded on Friday, January 25th, 2019. We're back, as you can see, in the virtual chat room, not able to feel our respective auras in the same Airbnb. Now, Brandon, you weren't there. It was a smelly one. I've it heard. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> but you know what? We are still able to feel our respective remote tech auras, I guess. And also, we got so many air fresheners. <laughs> no need for those here. And they didn't work. Yeah, they did not work. <laughs> As Jewel says here, we are a family, but we're always ready to talk about more mobile tech. I'm Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? And I still got with me from Gadget Match. Hi. Someone who likes her hot chocolate with bourbon. That is true. That did happen. But don't define me by that instance. Sounds like Jules. something lethal. Yeah, Jules. Jules. Did we tell Jules that story? No, because I posted an Instagram photo of us at that Lantern Festival oh, where right. I had the hot coffee and hot the chocolate. Ba- hot, yeah, hot chocolate. Hot and chocolate the and, babies. and the caption was the cup had hot chocolate and babies. Well, it's it's it's, it's Isa said. I almost I called you by your Instagram handle. It's happens. Isa Rodriguez. <laughs> Hi, Mirveta is back in Honduras for yeah, our yeah. broadcasting luncheon, as it were. No one's yeah, eating, yeah. though. I am. Tea. Are you? Okay, tea. You chew your tea? Something's wrong with your tea. Uh, I do some <laughs> weird things with my tea ever since you taught me. There we go. Oh, fair. Fair. Um, okay, that's a whole different podcast. Uh, and over on the East Coast is our pal Brandon Miniman. We haven't seen you in a little, in a little while, uh, so she post CES. Yeah. Well, I'm glad... Uh... We got the chance to hang out today. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Um, all right, so we're all back in our Hangouts Live. Um, it's not one of our stories, but I do want to say that um, there's nothing that we can really say about changes to the podcast or anything like that, but some of you out there might know, and you might be mentioning in the live chat, that Hangouts is going to die soon. <laughs> like <laughs> That announcement just came out like a day or two ago. Hangouts well, is, is... Yeah, but, but it's going to die in Microsoft time, meaning it's going to take like seven months for it to die. Exactly. It's going to be, I think they said by October. Yeah. That's a lot of time. <laughs> it's a painful, slow, thousand cut triad uh, death. <laughs> <laughs> or, right. as, or as I would say, the time it takes for a product from Microsoft to be announced and then for it to be launched. True. Very true. When Google decides to kill <clears throat> another product because they've done it so many times, where they cut off millions of people from using a Surface, do you think they have like a dial that they flip to off and it just <laughs> could be. Not everyone? Could be. No, they, they have a dial with 10,000 notches on it and each mm-hmm. one is a person that's using it. <laughs> oh my God. And, and Google kills off so many like useful products. Like yeah. you remember the reader, the, the RSS mm-hmm. feed thing? Yeah. That's such a good one. Yeah. But you know what? Google News is not that bad um, in its place, but an RSS reader is pretty dope. Um, I remember we all used to use that back in the day. Feedly. Um, I'm trying to remember some other ones, but anyway, we're, we're digressing already and we haven't even gotten to the stories yet. All right. <laughs> Go so, for it. <laughs> all right. So this week we have quite a lot to talk about. Um, and also, uh, mm-hmm. there's a lot, there's a lot of news that's coming out, some leaks, uh, everything leading up to mobile world Congress, just after the consumer electronics show of 2019, we have mobile world Congress 2019. Yeah. So there's a lot happening right now and the leaks are just rolling out right now. We have a story coming out of Italy saying that the Galaxy S10e, as it is called, may actually go under 800 euros while a 5G-enabled S10 Plus could hit 1,600 euros. Now, the collective gasp from everybody. Uh, yes, I'm already comes- breathing. <laughs> the, like, uh, like, I'm already breathing. I reported on this yesterday, and I was like, no. It's not yeah, going to exactly. that. Like, forget it. Well, this comes out of Italian publication Tuto Android, uh, who claims to have sources stating that there's going to be an entry-level Galaxy S10, which to me is kind of the news here. Like, the Mm -hmm. prices and all that stuff, I don't know if 5G should cost that much, but the fact that there might be an entry-level of a flagship phone... Is it a thing? Is entry-level... Are entry-level phones a thing now? Like, I mean, in Asia, it's always been a thing because there's really that market Mm -hmm. who needs that segment, right? It's the only thing they can afford. It's it's not the richest market, but 
Now it seems like everyone's going like flagship, a cheaper flagship. Yeah. Well, uh, Jaime, you uh, like you said, you uh, reported on this yesterday on the Daily. So, what were your thoughts on this? No, it's just think about it. Like right now, I'm. I wish that what what's happening right now with iPhones would have happened with the 10, so that we wouldn't have had like a whole last year of crazy price tags. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel that the iPhone is just proof of concept. Like right now, there have been deals on iPads, MacBooks, and iPhones like crazy for the past like week or so. Yeah. Um, and so it's that's just going to be a trend going forward. People are not crazy enough to pay $1,600 for a phone. And you've got the OnePlus 6T McLaren, which costs 700 bucks, like, you know, a limited edition phone. Like, seriously, why would you pay so much for a Galaxy? Like, what does that Galaxy do that's worth $1,600? Well, that's the question. Like, Brandon, do you think 5G is meant to be this expensive? No. Well, it's 1,600 euro, which is $1,800. And over my life, I've spent the equivalent of a house on phones and technology. But 1,800, I can't get there. It's just, it's too far off. I mean, even like, I mean, what what would justify such a price? I can't even imagine. $1,800 is the price of like two laptops and like- Two great it, laptops. Two $1,800 great is like three round trip tickets oh my god <laughs> you can see where our perspective comes being in a long distance crazy. <laughs> it, 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 I, I you know i don't it, i just don't think it'll happen i just don't and and even if it does like they'll probably launch it at that price and then di discount it a month later because nobody bought the damn thing yeah exactly um jules has a good point here as well um why not just get onto 5g in a sort of mediocre fashion first to kind of like ease it in and if uh there's an expansion to three-year payment plans to even justify this kind of cost could you imagine paying this for 36 whole months no you'd have to pay like 65 dollars for that thing a month still it doesn't even it, with three years right yeah yeah no, with three years, it'd be like close to 50. Okay. But uh, it just it doesn't make any common sense. Like, why would you, like, think about it. What is the, I, I get that 5G is going to be great, but it's going to take years for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's going to happen in the interim? Like, it's not, they're not going to be able to launch 5G right now. Like, even if you bought the damn phone, where are you going to use it? It's going to be an LTE phone for the longest time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, in our chat, Rick Bearcat, it is the manufacturers trying to desensitize us over the years. Well, I mean, that, now that we're desensitized, that's the reason why we're starting to get all of these different phones that are coming out in the same exact range. You have the S10 Plus, which potentially might have 12 gigabytes of RAM and a whole terabyte of storage. And then you have the, um, the lower end models, which are going to be called the entry levels, but still have six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Specs that are even eclipsing the Pixel 3 XL. <laughs> so you still have these specifications that are going to be called entry level, when in reality, they're going to be at least $800. Also, these uh, very expensive phones are the Halo devices that get people to say, I'm not going to get that one, but I'll get the mid-range or the low-end. And it kind of has the flavor of the higher-end one. That is a very good point, Brandon. Yeah. I mean, why, why are we actually make this point in the previous podcast? It's like, what is the purpose of these flexible phones? I'm like, nothing more than a publicity stunt. Mm -hmm. They'll, nobody cared about FlexFi before we saw this thing come out. Yeah. So it's the and, only and reason why people are now, yeah, people are now wondering before that nobody cared. And even at CES, people were like, oh, it's a flex buy. I guess I have to go and cover that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it wasn't really a, oh, look at that. It's a flexible phone. Like, we need to check it out. It was always a, I sort of have to because it's the first one. Every single yeah. publication walks by that Royale booth and they look down and they see this flexible device and it's not, oh, crap, that looks dope. It was more like, damn it, I got to do that for <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we left it last. If you remember, I'm like, Josh, if you have time to stop by the Flex 5 booth <laughs> and, and you can record it, Go for it, and if not, I totally get it, dude. Don't, don't, don't worry. <laughs> don't, don't trip. That's what, I, yeah. that's what I told Josh. It's like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of foldable devices, we do have one that might be coming out from not only a brand that we're all very familiar with, but also from a line that is a throwback in and of itself. Motorola is purported <laughs> to be reviving the Razer brand with a limited stock foldable phone. Now, this is coming at the heels of Xiaomi even. Donovan himself, like I know Donovan from, from Xiaomi. He was showing off the uh, foldable device that Xiaomi apparently has in development. But Motorola wants to kind of bring back the Razer brand 
um, in their own way. Uh, wow. So we can yeah. talk about both of these kind of at the same time. So have you, you, you guys have obviously seen the Xiaomi concept, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's start with that one. <laughs> Xiaomi with this like wing design and the video is over on Jules's feed right now. I think this, I think everyone agrees, this is the way it should work. I think this is dope. Like the flex pie in, in, in general is a weird fold upon yourself type thing that feels really <laughs> weird in the pocket. At least this can have some semblance of symmetry. And if there's anybody, I mean, I, I like I like Xiaomi phones generally. Um, so I, I, I'm actually really excited to see this thing in the flesh. I don't know what you thought, Issa. I, it's looking, yes, I agree with you when you say that this looks like a better execution. But the thing is, it's it seems like it's the same material as the FlexPy. I don't like that. I'm very particular with how my phones feel. And if well, this MC... It, that's the only way, sadly. Yeah. yeah. Well, like glass don't bend. Glass <laughs> does not bend. Only with well, heat. I, yeah, not even mm, with heat. Mm, yeah. Well, I guess that at this point, I'm really just not into the whole idea unless they can figure out how to make it at least feel a little bit more premium mm -hmm. i i just i just i can't i this don't is, see myself this using is one it. of those devices where the thing it does is uh -huh. the premium that's the thing though mm, no <laughs> <laughs> not going for it not my thing how about you guys go for it brandon yeah i was gonna say these foldable phones are so funny because people don't understand why and how you're going to use it but to me it's so obvious a foldable phone is two devices in one. When you want it to be pocket friendly and one hand usability and use it as a phone, you have the phone. But when you want to show grandma a picture or you want to read mm -hmm. an article like a book or you want to um, you know, browse a web page like you have a full tablet, it's just the ultimate in versatility, two devices in one. I could see so many times when it might be helpful. The Xiaomi demo, the Xiaomi example is a little bit weird because you know, it's going to be, it's going to be so thick. A lot of these are going to be so thick, but I can imagine in the future when they're not thick, it's the ultimate two in one that will, it'll be amazing. All right. I mean, you want to know how often I see grandma? <laughs> uh, never because <laughs> like, it, it's one of those things where it's like, I, I feel as my opinion is it's a solution in search of a problem. I like the Xiaomi approach because it makes the product look like a regular phone when you flip it from the back completely. Yes. Like that's one of the main reasons why, like if you're still gonna fold the thing, so it doesn't, if you flex it in half, a large tablet flexed in half will make this like really wide smartphone. Whereas mm -hmm. if it's two bends on each side, you can have a large tablet and then have like a really slim smartphone in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah, that's my technically opinion. technically the, real infinity screen if you think about it kind of because yeah it because goes it, it, up it until yeah. the back right yeah it looks like, like the sideways yeah. eight in a way and the thing is like i i already liked what was being shown in that video because the um the flex pie had one very big problem it didn't know what to do with the android interface as you folded it this one it's more obvious he's holding it in a portrait orientation uh, Lin Bin is. He's holding it in a portrait orientation, then turns it over, it goes landscape, folds it, it becomes portrait again. It's obvious what Android should do. Meanwhile, the FlexPy is trying to segment its big screen into three different sections. That way, like notifications are in the middle if you fold it. And then on the back, you could use it as a selfie cam, stuff like that. So like it's 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 fairly more obvious with this Xiaomi concept what Android should do. And I think it's I think it's great. Um <laughs> Uh, foldable screen will mean okay. Vicky Meta, foldable screen will be a fingerprint fest. Oh yeah, oh, that's <laughs> gonna be crazy. <laughs> the problem is it's made of plastic, so you know you you know the micro scratches on that thing are gonna be like yeah. really epic after a bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, there won't there won't be any phone cases. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. 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 Well, also Xiaomi does a really great job, especially with like their MIUI and whatnot, to like. To, to, to get the opinions of the fans and of, of the people. Uh, they're actually asking for ideas on names and names like the Me Dual Flex or the Me Mix Flex have been coming out. And the Me uh, Vaporware, yeah. The Me, <laughs> the Vape, the Me, 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 Me Porware. No, I can't. Me Vape. My, my Me Vape, <laughs> the Me Vape. 
if you um, wanted to have a case, Isa, for the um, mm -hmm. or a flexible device, you could just get like a Ziploc bag and stick it in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the saddest thing ever. That would also that address another. That would also address another potential problem with foldable devices, and that's waterproof. <laughs> <True. Yeah. laughs> but no, I mean, I... think about it. Once upon a time, what device was that? It was an Apple device that, when they showcased, they pulled out of that brown envelope. Oh, the imagine a, the original, yeah, so the imagine the launch where they go like it's a ziplock. <laughs> this is a plug bag. <laughs> Play out no, of a product no. placement. Uh -huh. For me, I'll be honest with you. I don't really like I feel that I that's the better concept, the one from Xiaomi, but I I think that the only phone that I'd be I'd be willing to use that's flat that would be flexible is that razor. So let's that talk would, about that. Yeah. That okay. would be just I don't know, man. Like Amazing. I, like that would be just bragging rights, I think. Or <laughs> look, like that's the one moment where I'm really gonna geek out and be like, I could give two craps if this thing is useful or not. It just looks really cool. That looks really cool. I mean, I had a V3. I would love to carry that thing. I, I'm looking at the concept uh, patent right now. It's a very. It's it's like the most portraitist of portrait orientation. Screen. Yeah, <laughs> that thing is tall. <laughs> Here's the thing: the razor phone was my dream phone, which I never got. Oh, you never got one? No, I wanted one. I was begging my dad; I, he wouldn't get me one. Mm. And I was like, I was just sad. But the phone was crazy expensive back in the day. If you think mm. about it, and it wasn't it's like true. the most powerful phone back then. There was the V the 635, which had expandable storage and stuff like that. So it was it was really it was a really hard sell because it was an underpowered phone with a crappy camera back in the but day. More importantly, Jaime, there was an orange one and there was a pink one. Oh God. Yeah. Everyone and see I that's the thing. Like, You're talking and, and, to the wrong people. We liked and, that slate black. And no. then <laughs> No, I yeah, and then when they the slate black was great, and then they came up with that uh, the V the V three I, if you guys remember, that one had expandable storage and it came out in this like really crazy purple that was really nice. Ah, Ooh. gotcha. Those were the glory Motorola days. The problem we is, just like back in the day, Jules is pointing out right now, just like back in the day and now, that thing back then was crazy expensive. Right now, the rumors are mm -hmm. $1,500, which, mm -hmm. which... <laughs> I'm never uh, getting my razor. It better have oh, yeah. 12 gigabytes. <laughs> it, it, it better have 12 gigabytes oh, of gosh. RAM and one terabyte of storage. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> oh man, that, that camera would have to be crazy insane. <clears throat> we know it won't for me to care about it. That's that's the problem. That's where I'm like, God, I'm so glad I'm a phone reviewer right now. This is so great. <laughs> I, I'll, it's true. Because huh? I'm almost probably going to use it and it's going to be like, all right, anyways, I didn't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, foldable devices are just going to have that premium because of the fact that mm -hmm. they fold. Which is going to be crazy, like, and it's and it's and it's interesting because we have all of these different trends that are sort of appearing at the beginning of this year, and here's a new one coming out of China from two particular companies. We're talking about first the Meizu Zero. Mm -hmm. What is <laughs> happening right now? So remember when I asked you when this, this is a weird phrase, by the way. Perfection cannot have openings. No, I was telling you this morning that that <laughs> sounded weirdly <laughs> sexual. I was like, <laughs> what are they talking? I think it's because like it's translated from whatever the the Chinese phrase was but i actually was looking at their live stream when they launched this and mm -hmm. i was like i remember showing you and i was like what is going on they said they're launching a phone but everything's in chinese i don't understand but it was is there some weird holeless trend in china because we're seeing two phones in in a week coming out from china it'd be the greatest thing if this was a, a, a whole list phone that uh -huh. still wasn't ip certified oh <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason i feel like this would be an important trend though like okay wait, no wait, calls. Wait, put it wait a second wait that sounds wait, wrong before we fully transition to that we didn't hear what brandon thinks about that razor oh i'm sorry oh yeah oh uh, i love i love the the flip phone form factor and there hasn't been a good one for you have that samsung flip phone don't you oh the galaxy folder yeah oh it's garbage i mean it's got Where's like last generation software and hardware and it's it's basically useless I want to try. Wait, is that the one they gave to Jackie Chan? Do you guys remember that story? <laughs> Wait, is that what is the folder? The expensive. Yeah, the Samsung? super expensive <gasps> one, right? Yeah. That's cool. I want to try that one. I'll send it to you, Joshua. Just remind me. That'd Seriously. be great. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I have a phone that Jackie Chan has. 
<laughs> but what I like what I like about the Razer is apparently it has the external display as well, so you can still get at least notifications, and then you can you know open it and use it fully as a phone. I just the the reason why I don't agree that foldable smartphones should be more expensive is if you think about it, the POLED technology has exist, has existed for a while. Like these screens have been able to flex for a while. So why is it that just because you're now giving me a display with plastic because you want to flex it and it's cut in half and you've got the battery separate, why are you going to charge me more for that? It's not like if the product hasn't been able to flex for a while. It's that, like I said, it's it's just because it's a feature. Like something can bend, you you spend more on it. That's, but, that's well, why. yeah, true. I I recognize that my iPad Pro is expensive, but you know. Yeah. Well, it bends. <laughs> If the shoe fits. Yeah, will it bend? Mm -hmm. I'm curious. Can you imagine all those YouTubers who are going to get these bendable phones and be like, will it bend? And then it bends. And then, like, on the 7,562nd oh video, it's not going to be funny anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I, I, have re I have one question about this, and this has been, like, something I've been thinking about. Like, so if they come up with the Razer phone, I'm sure that they legally own that name, but this has been, like, in my head, confusing to Razer. Especially now that there's a razor phone, I know well, but, it's one letter off, but like it's still confusing. yeah. But the, what the, happens the, all the, the time? razor, yeah, and the razor name, the the razor V three was like mm -hmm. what a decade prior yeah. to when razor. No, not a decade, but it was far. Oh, wait, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So you know the the fact that razor made their you know their brand around gaming and they started with the mice and everything. That's mm -hmm. you know that's their thing. You know, they. I don't think they they made the company back then with the idea of making a phone. They just drifted to it because that's where technology yeah. is going. Yeah, indeed. Okay, so before we get too far into this, let's get back into the main news. <laughs> okay. Oh, so cordless. let's. <laughs> well, it is literally called a proof of concept. So it's completely made of ceramic, which is something that we see from like Xiaomi and and uh, well, Meizu has done it quite a few times in the past as well. But basically, there's. No, there are no holes. There are no ports. There's no nothing. It's so it's wirelessly charged with the Snapdragon 845, dual cameras. That wireless charging is 18 watt. So you know, there's probably not going to even be any fast charging involved with this phone. Um, and then also, you know, just just to add it in, we have sort of like dual stories coming mm -hmm. in in the same topic. Vivo did the same thing as well with the Apex 2019. Yeah. Um, so they have a fingerprint sensor that's covering the entire display, mm -hmm. a magnetic port, which to me makes a lot more sense, like a magnetic port for data and power transfer, yeah. and then a Snapdragon 855, which potentially will have the 5G. Oh, on. so it does have file transfer. Uh, yes. There was one phone, again, we were talking about vaporware earlier, mm -hmm. there was one phone that did try that concept, and that was the Turing, the original Turing. Vaporware. Um, yep. So they said, like, there are no ports. But there's this magnetic connector over on the side that just snaps right on, and you can use that for data transfer and for uh, will that charging. be waterproof? The magnetic port. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Should be. That sounds. Cool. I mean, Meizu is no stranger to weird things. You had that um, that podcast you did while driving with Jaime, mm -hmm. and I was sleeping at the back. You were talking about a phone with. <laughs> I was trying not to call out. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> but you were talking about the phone with a tiny screen on the back. That was a Meizu phone. Oh, that was a Meizu yeah. phone. Yeah, okay. that was a Meizu phone. So that was a pretty cool one. Mm. But it never really took off because Meizu is of Chinese, like main, they mainly focus on in China, mm. in the Chinese market. But I mean, I have no feelings about this phone except like <laughs> why Why was there a need to create the whole list phone? Well, okay, let's ask Brandon real quick. Like, um, Brandon, you pick up a phone, it's got a full screen, maybe a hole punch. Let's say it maybe it has that, but it's for the most part all screen, no holes, no nothing. It's literally just you're holding a screen in your hand, on a bash it. That sounds that, that sounds really fantastic. And as long as it doesn't compromise <laughs> usability, like for example, you would think that you would need a power button to turn the phone on, but no, mm -hmm. tap tap to wake is really good, or even lift to wake. Um, if you remember. Uh, when Android made the change from physical buttons to on-screen buttons, it ushered in a whole new form factor of devices. And it was so futuristic because you didn't need that stupid search, back, and home button. <laughs> it was all on-screen. And that was a really big deal. So we have the technology now to not need uh, any holes or ports, and it's going to make for a super clean, super slick device. What do you think, Jaime? Uh, uh, aside from the delays that I'm having in my feed, 
like god i hate my <laughs> internet right now i'll i'll get it fixed but anyways uh I don't know, man. It, it, it ushered in a lot of things, but then again, I I sometimes miss the tactility of buttons. So I, I it's just the way things had to go. The less moving parts, the better. But that's not. I don't necessarily feel that it got better over time. That's just me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to check on the live chat. Uh, let me see real quick. Do 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 do. Call the wireless charging built in. So like wireless charging though. Like if it's if it's going to if we're going to dive so deep into wireless charging. Um, have you, uh, Brandon in particular, have you, have you come to rely upon quick, fast, or warp, or whatever you want to call it, charging? Um, for me, it's good to have the convenience to be able to top up quickly with a fast charger and wire yeah. it. But, but honestly, like, every day at night, I plug in my phone, and when I wake up, it's full. And when I go to bed, it's at, like, 20 30%. Um, so charging doesn't matter that much to me, except <clears throat> the added convenience if you're going out at night to be able to pop it on the warp charger and get like 30% really fast. Someone named Goku Ultra Instinct okay. <laughs> says, <laughs> says in the comment section, how to charge my phone? Oh, wait, no, that wasn't the one. Uh, how do I play my game and charge my phone at the same time? On the wireless mat. <laughs> so it's just like you have to hold the wireless back. See, but that no. that I guess for me because I'm not so much a fan of wireless charging yet. I haven't gotten to the point where it's something that feels natural to me, and it annoys me to because I want I charge my phone uh, while on the go a lot. I ha I always have power banks. You know this. You do. Yeah. And the wireless power bank has always been problematic to me because you can be on your phone and i like being on my phone as it charges like while i'm in a car or while i'm on, in the mall or whatever if it's a it's if it's a cord it's fine i charge but because like, if a it's a portable on wireless, wireless power bank like yeah. the contact keeps on moving and i'm just like what is there going you go. on yeah because if it's on a wireless charger you kind of like tip it just a little bit all mm -hmm. of a sudden it's not charging. yeah and, and, it, and it's not that like i've been i've seriously decided to go full wireless charging for the past week or so um, I can give you so many cases where I wake up in the morning and my iPhone is not charged mm -hmm. uh, because the phone vibrated, it moved from the pad, and so it's not charging anymore. <laughs> wow. And so it's like the stupid, I'm like, God, it's so annoying. It's like, so, like right now I have the iPhone charging here on the side because it didn't charge last night. You know, it just, oh, oh God. For me, <laughs> that's the problem. Like, I feel that wireless charging doesn't just need the component to be able to charge, but also needs to be magnetic. Uh, in mm -hmm. order to Ooh. ensure that it snaps fully yeah. into the product. Or just get a wireless charging pad that has some grip on it, on the top. True. Mm -hmm. yeah. Velcro. Oh, Velcro <laughs> everything. True that. <laughs> no, but True it's that. also, it's also, um, I've fallen in love with uh, fast charging mm -hmm. lately. Um, I've been on the Oppo Lambo, mm -hmm. which is like 0 to 100% in 35 minutes. I can wow. literally... Yeah. And I said this is the last podcast, right? Put makeup on and the battery would be full. And if wow. something is that fast and reliable, I don't um there I have no problem being tied down. Yeah. For that's just like 35. Jules minutes. said Oppo made a Lambo. Yeah. <laughs> Not a car. No, uh, no, no. Oppo the Find yeah. X. Yeah, the Find X. Yeah, which I keep which either. I keep calling the Find 10. Um here, here, here. It's it's on this it's in the same vein as the uh the OnePlus McLaren. Yeah. Which has the warp and it has the same exact thing. It's, the, sa it's the same thing as the warp charger. Yeah, I'm using yeah. the McLaren right now. Yeah, I and I I am as well. Um okay, so we have one more story before we get to our little break. Um all right. Hi May. I'm gonna I'm gonna use you to kind of segment into this a little bit. What did I break? Uh, how's <laughs> how how into Nokia are you right now? Like you oh my are, God! You are enjoying everything Nokia is putting out, and it looks like Nokia is going to do more in the U.S. Yeah. So, so I did that seven point one review. It's so the funny part is I brought the phone, but then obviously Techtober and crazy November and stuff like that, and so I left it to Sam. Sam did our Spanish video, and then I'm like, "Are you done with the seven point one?" He's like, "Yeah, sure." And so I had not noticed that it had already updated to Pi. I had not noticed that the interface is literally a pixel. It is a Google Pixel 3 XL in absolutely everything, but the fact that you can switch out the, the Pixel pill and switch it to buttons if you want. And so, oh my God, like if it weren't, and the camera during the day is good, camera during the night is terrible. It's just, wow, I, I'm really impressed. I had no idea that these phones were so good. I was like, so it, surprised it, how happy you were about that phone. 
I so was I. <laughs> I was like, I was like, um, so here, so I actually wrote the script down. And I was expecting the camera to actually be worse than it was, but I sent the script over to Brandon for, for him to help me condense it. And so it turns out that I went out to take more photos, and then when I pull them into the computer, I'm like, I'm going to have to change the script. This, this camera is actually not bad. Like, what do I have to bash on this phone? I have nothing. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Like, if anything, just low-light photography, which is expected, not because of the – it's just I hate it when, when entry-level phones are like, yeah, F1.8 aperture. That's all great. But if your if, if your DSP is your sorry if your image signal processor is terrible, it doesn't matter what aperture your ca your camera has, it, the photos will not perform. Period. Mm. You know, and so that's the biggest problem with entry level smartphones. That's the reason why the Poco phone takes such great photos because it has the ISP from the eight forty five. Mm, that's true. Yeah. And isn't the uh, the Poco just went global recently, right? Does he had another thing that? Uh... That I'm they're doing. Looking is, at you in a black with a black. Really, skin. you didn't see that tweet? He had. Um, it wasn't obviously it wasn't Donovan. It was Donovan, wasn't it? Uh, but anyway, they had like you know, poker phones going global, and to celebrate it, we're giving away like hundreds of Mi Band threes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Anyway, why can I, I get a, Why can I get a Mi Band three? Damn it. I want to try the Mi Band three. Oh, I want to try the Mi Band three. <laughs> have, I, <laughs> have I literally been the only person in this chat that's been using the Mi Band three yep. on the regular? I, I um, believe. So. Like it. Oh, okay. Well, we'll we'll try to fix that. Soon. Yeah. But anyway, back to Nokia. Um, so apparently, Nokia is going to be bringing more mid-range, maybe lower, um, lower spec. Uh, smartphones to Cricut Wireless, which is to be expected. This one in particular is the Nokia 3.1 Plus, a 6-inch HD Plus display, not full HD, HD Plus display, a Snapdragon 439, which I didn't even know existed, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and 32 gigabytes of storage. Uh, it's $159. I mean, Nokia is finding its way back onto, it's finding its way back stateside. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reports are saying that the reason why this is happening, or rather uh, one of the reasons why this might be happening, is because Nokia saw such great reviews and sales of the 7. As, uh, yeah, yeah as 721. Has it's, 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 it, it's worth the money, man. And I, I mean, if Nokia, Nokia started that push, if you guys remember what they made the whole partnership with Foxconn, HMD with Foxconn, like they started initially in China in the entry to mid-level market. And uh, I mean, you guys remember in that podcast that we were doing with Nicole, where she was like, this company has sold so many phones. Like, I forget what the number was, but the number was just crazy. They're selling a ton more phones than most companies out there. And so mm -hmm. if the entry to mid-level range is what's going to get Nokia to show as a flagship soon, which I'm, I hope that's going to happen, um, I'm all for it, man. Companies, that this is just the way to go. Like, even if... Even if they, we need these like Vanguard crazy awesome spec phones to help for bragging rights and everything, it doesn't really matter. The the ones that sell the most are the mid rangers. Mm -hmm. Hold on, Jules, Jules, Jules just said, where is he? What? Danny's in the chat. <laughs> Danny, <laughs> where is Danny? Danny? Danny's okay. upset because he never got the Nokia 7.1. <laughs> I, I, I can fix that, man. <laughs> you, you just owe me. You just owe me a Super Nintendo Classic and a Nintendo Classic. We could totally Boom. fix that, buddy. Boom! I gave. <laughs> it's funny. I actually have the SNES Classic. I gave it to my brother because he was such a fan of Mario RPG, and I told him, "While you're trading, while you're day trading, play it again." <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't even opened it yet. Uh, but Danny, shouts out to you, man. And to everybody in our chat, thank you for being in the conversation with us. Uh, we are actually at the end of our news segment. So I think what I'll do is we'll go ahead and get a little bit of a break. And then we'll check in with... Actually, hold on. My bad. There's one more thing we got to talk about. <laughs> I totally forgot about this. All right. Who's ready for the craziest phone case of all time? I love oh this. God. <laughs> I love this. Oh, my God. All right. This is the this this is the um, as Jewel said. It's our uselessness of the week. We actually need a segment like that. Indeed. Yeah. Worst gadgets ever. Oh, so this is a crowd I love fund. This. this is a crowdfunded product called the Spoon Fork. Have they, well, I want to say it again. Have, have they already gotten more than twelve backers? Because I assume that's all they have in their payroll anyway. That poor woman. <laughs> I know. What? That poor you get woman. It. She's like, why am I doing this? How much am I? She's like, <laughs> she's like, I'm only getting, I'm only getting paid fifteen dollars for this. It's humiliating. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a model. <laughs> so it's basically, it's it's a phone, it's a phone case. It's an iPhone case 
th that basically has in it a, a, a freaking spoon and the it's missing a straw yeah <laughs> so to anybody watching the uh the feed right now uh we're gonna get into our break but i want you to uh we want you to caption that gif that you're seeing right now <laughs> and we'll say what it is in uh, after the break so let's go ahead and jump into our break right now all right the Pocket Now Weekly is brought to you with support of Caseta by Lutron. Today, I want to talk to you about Caseta by Lutron, brought to you by Lutron Pioneers and Smart Home Lighting. With Caseta, you can schedule your lights to come on at dusk, so your family always comes back to a well-lit home. And you can tell Google Assistant, Alexa, or Siri to turn the lights on or off, bright or dim, or anywhere in between. These are dimmer switches we're talking about, after all, coming from Lutron, the company with over 60 years of experience with illumination. And you can integrate them into your smart home routine by connecting them to your Sonos soundbar, your Nest camera and thermostat, and plenty of other devices. And you don't even have to physically press the switches. Jules, our podcast producer extraordinaire, has been telling his assistant to turn the lights on and off as he moves from room to room throughout his evening, eating dinner, watching TV, and then going to bed. It's effortless. It's smart lighting the smart way. You can get it too. Search C-A-S-E-T-A -E or head to Lutron.com to learn more. Caseta by Lutron. Welcome home to peace of mind. All right. I wanted to be sure we went, we got through that break as much as quickly as possible because Brandon, as usual, has to get out of here in a number of minutes. Um, yeah, so I want I've got a uh, sorry for the early, but I've got a child care issue. <laughs> I was not that big of an issue, really. <laughs> no, it's it's okay. One of the kids is sick, and I have to pick up the other one. You know how it is, I mean, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> we 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 don't. Yeah. Where are the kids? <laughs> <laughs> true. True. All right. So I wanted to get two things from you because we have a we have a number of stories that are coming out of Mobile World Congress. But before we look forward to Barcelona, Brandon, since you're it's your first podcast back, we've had two since. Uh, well, we had two, one during and one since uh, CES. How did you feel about the way uh, CES went? Um, you know, as usual, I kind of wish there was more phone news, but that has shifted to Mobile World Congress and individual phone launches. But back in the day, there were, you know, more interesting things related to phones, not just uh, plastic foldable devices that have no <laughs> have no merit. Well, U.S. carriers have toned down then. I remember in the past, you would want to go to the Verizon booth to see what phones they had, you know. Yeah, um, some, something to do, right? Yeah, but now, like, U.S. carriers, I, I don't even see the, the U.S. carrier booths at C, yeah. like, at all. I mean, it was it's such a general tech show at this point that I even did an ad spot with an insurance company. Oh, my <laughs> That's gosh. how general it is now. I yeah. love the CES because there was so much beauty tech, which mm -hmm. I'm, I understand isn't something that interests you guys or Josh. Well, yeah, specifically, no, the, who the, left me at the event, but you I love it. But that's a good point. Like a lot of things have shifted from CES. Like it's it's literally the TV show now, the mm -hmm. sound oh, yeah, yeah, show, yeah. the car show, the and you know oh, yeah, for me cars. for me I you know just go go to it as a geek and stop looking for phones. It's not the show for <laughs> that. And Joe, yeah, you, so, you, you, you can totally move away from that gif of somebody. Like, yeah, it's <laughs> already becoming disturbing, dude. Do we get any good captions? <laughs> oh, let GIF? me check. <laughs> right, you, you get a look at that one. And while I ask Brandon, real quick, what was your watching from afar? Uh, one highlight from CES, and then we'll get into some quick MWC talk before you leave. Um, <laughs> Sorry, um, I laughed at that. Okay. I was gonna, um, after this comment, I'm just gonna drop off. Um, my favorite tech from CES would be 8K, which is, it's so funny because 4K is not even established yet. Yeah. And, but like they, the TV manufacturers need a reason to increase, decommoditize their TVs and increase prices. And 8K is like the thing. I just want to, I just want to see a 16K TV, which maybe next year will bring. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll pay. We will pay special attention to whatever phone you say you want to see the most at MWC. Pick one, real quick. Um. Um. Let's go LG G8. I want to see what gimmick LG has this year to make it. <laughs> to make it. Um. You know. I think we should. I think we should start with that one. Yeah. So okay. So uh, Jules is already scrolling through the leak that uh, that broke from XDA about the LG G8. I'm dropping off, guys. Peace and oh, love. Thank you. 
See you later. Thanks again, Brandon. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that, yeah, the thank you branding of potentially is going to be staying the same. But yeah. we literally have a leak now of the LG G8. We um, might also be the only couple who get that joke when, like, someone says thank you. The other person automatically goes. No, the LG. cool part is that at, at least at least we were in the dinner where somebody actually explained to us what "thank you" meant. Oh uh, yeah, if you remember, I had no idea. Like I had no idea that the whole idea was "thank you," like you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I would have never thought like that. <laughs> I think it got lost. It's something that's cheeky that made sense in the cultural. Korean context because like LG is Korean, but like eventually got lost as it like snowballed into normal mainstream um, Indeed, thinking. Yeah. yeah. Jules, do me a favor, uh, put that link of what you're looking at right now in the chat because I don't have that tab up. Because I want to bring this up. The uh, the LG G8 is uh, is is here. Like this is this is literally the leak. And okay, I have to give some quick like beginning. Like, be, like 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 preliminary reactions to this like I have always been a fan of LG they pioneered the wide angle on a on a smartphone notch like really like LG is gonna be behind the times once again on their flagship smartphone because like yeah this thing's wait, 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 wait. LG is gonna be like what do you mean they always are of course well, <laughs> <laughs> well I mean again yeah that's what I mean like they're going to be once again behind the times a little bit. And like Brandon was saying, there's going to be some sort of gimmick on this phone that somehow differentiates it. But then they're also going to be moving five steps back because they have something like a notch when pole punches are supposed to be the 2019 trend. So I'm already kind of disappointed, to be honest. Like, I need to, obviously, I need to use the phone mm -hmm. to see what it will be like. But just these leaks already make me a little bit disappointed because it looks like last year's phone. Yeah. So... I don't know. Any any quick reactions from you, Jaime? No. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Like, like I think that the last uh, LG phone that I really liked was the V30. Yeah. Uh, to a certain degree, the G6 uh, were phones that I really liked. But then, you know, if you remember, devices like the G4 were like really innovative when it came to their camera technology. Like I remember comparing the G4 to anything, it was great. And then now you grab the G7 and it looks just like the G4, meaning they, they kind of need to work on catching up with everybody else. Like they can't continue playing that game where they continue using smaller microns and do everything based on software. I think LG was the first company to, to innovate camera technology with software, but they, like, they're like four years late now. Like they, they, they really need to catch up. And it's not just the wide angle. Like uh, God, I remember. I remember there was this time when Juan was like, "Yeah, no, that's the best phone. It's the best phone." And so I was like, "All right, fine. So I'll go with my V20 to the Vatican to, you know, film everything, my vlog from the Vatican." And then when I saw the video, like in my computer, I was like, "What the?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just they they doctored the video so much, and it used to be. It used to be something that looked good at the time until finally manufacturers figured out how to make detailed video yeah. without going too crazy on it. Yeah. Um, so LG needs to sort of go back to the drawing board a little bit. And if they're going, like, honestly, like, the, the, the companies that partner up with large camera companies tend to be the ones who make really good Mm. footage and photos um yeah. so lg could do that you know i know zeiss is taken up freaking uh like us taken up maybe they could uh, olympus panasonic <laughs> you know like <laughs> might as well um but the other thing too we have another announcement potentially from lg um that is maybe less of an lg uh announcement more of like a sprint announcement because 5g is going to be coming to an lg phone but it's probably going to be on the sprint network so we're um, getting a larger vapor chamber. Imagine that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the LG vapor. This is so weird because in tech right now, you want to stay away from the word vapor. <laughs> and, I, know. I mean, from someone who does a lot of lifestyle tech, this is just like, what is a vapor? Why would you? What? I, I, I have you want to keep it cool. I mean, right now, Hangouts has my computer about to take off because of it. You know? <laughs> I, I, I completely get it. It's just, I, why are we calling vapor changer, chambers a feature is the thing, yeah. you know? 
Well, okay, so here Jules has this quote here. LG found in a survey of 1,000 U.S. and Korean correspondents, or respondents, rather, 74% have expressed a desire for 5G service. I think that everyone wants 5G, mm. but no one quite understands what it is. They just want faster yeah. internet. That's what yeah. they mean. Um, so, yes, Sprint has announced its first in the country car uh, carrier agreements to have the LG 5G phone. This may be it. Mm -hmm. So who knows uh, the vapor the vapor chamber, the vapor well, chamber like because it's going to get. Room or something. Oh, we have <laughs> we have this amazing feature. Yeah, it's a coolant system. You won't be able to see. Like I'm like whatever. Like like if there's one thing LG does not get is marketing. I I have proven that. <laughs> <laughs> like thank you. Like using somebody in a subway to. The feature off Jordan, Jordan which was it, uh, Jason Gordon, uh, JGL, Jordan? Joseph Gordon. Yeah, yeah. it's like, Wait, yeah, he, let's, yeah, he was, let's, okay. let's have somebody play music in the subway, and that's going to be our ad campaign. Like, yeah, sure. I mean, it already has me talking about the LG, whatever thing, whatever you, you know. <laughs> and so now let's talk about a vapor chamber. My god, Jules, I have no idea that I didn't know Aubrey Plaza did something with what? LG. Well, we'll look at that up later. But yeah, you didn't see those advertisements. Huh? Joseph Gordon-Levitt would use the V30 or the V30. Yeah, the V30. The V30. The V30. He would use the V30 in a subway. Oh, and it, okay. and the one thing that that commercial did right uh -huh. was on the very bottom corner, uh, it said whole this entire commercial filmed on the LG V30. That was That was a good thing. Uh -huh. But then it was just a silly commercial of people playing instruments with with, with like how many snap-ons and like uh, special lenses and yeah, yeah, probably product and whatever because my God you take that V thirty in low light and it's trash yeah it, it it's was bad and then that's the thing like low light when it comes to video recording mm -hmm. on a smartphone is always going to be like subpar but that was something else yeah. you're, you're looking it up right now. <laughs> I, I, I just scanned through it. It's not the best ad if it it has twenty three thousand views. Well, that's on YouTube. This was this was actually a TV spot. Oh, okay. Um, but anyway, LG probably going to be taking quite a bit of the news beat when it comes to Mobile World Congress. Mm -hmm. But that's not to overshadow the many different companies that are going to be coming up at Mobile World Congress. After all, Sony uses MWC as one of its mainstays for announcing the next Xperia smartphone. Now, what we well, have they, here is... They did last year. Um, yeah. Uh, not years before, oddly. It's just uh, Sony... The year before, they used CES for some weird reason. We yeah, they did, yeah. Um, but they always have the same... It's always the same thing, like kind of peeking behind the veil a little bit uh, as being tech journalists or tech, tech creators and whatnot. Um, they never have an actual press conference in a place. Their press conference is always at their booth, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. which I think is so funny. Um, and which then you in, just sort of in pile Berlin, in. Which in Berlin is the worst. Have you ever tried to get into those press conferences in Berlin? Like you can't even walk in. So the other day, their PR was like, "Are you going to join us for the Berlin press conference?" I'm like, "Are you? Will you be able to walk in along with the rest of the fancy <laughs> of people?" <laughs> in there, it's like forget it. I'm not even going to waste my time. You guys got a pre brief, I'll join, but not I'm not gonna go crazy in there. Forget it. You know, I don't think I've ever been in a pre briefing for Sony. Like I just I don't know who they do it with. You know what I, I mean? Have. I have. Oh yeah. But, but it's something new. It's because they changed their PR agency. And so now they're like, oh, we're doing pre briefs. I'm like, oh, finally. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what we have potentially at MWC is going to be the Sony Xperia XZ4. Mm -hmm. um, okay. According to just benchmarking, um, now this is this is not a surprise because Xperias tend to have the highest possible specifications, and like I say on multiple occasions, Sony is the only company that takes something like the newest Snapdragon processor and says, "Turn everything on." <laughs> like, Turn everything on. We're mm -hmm. going to have, they were the first ones with the super slow-mo recording. They were yeah. the first ones with 3D yeah. scanning and all that. And those are all processor that level 3D things. 3D scanning was fun. Those that are all really processor fun. level activities. Mm -hmm. And they're the only company that tends to turn everything on. So mm -hmm. I, I call Sony Xperia as like the proof of concept yeah. phone of the year. <laughs> um, but yeah, apparently this one, uh, leaks and rumors will state that it will probably have a really tall display that will take over a lot of the front of the phone. So maybe we're not going to get the huge bezels anymore like Sony's tend to have. Oh, um, I miss those. <laughs> <laughs> there might be the uh, a triple camera setup, uh, obviously killer specifications with a Snapdragon 855, 6 and 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of onboard storage. 
Um, invites have been going out for a February 25th event. I'm guessing, Jaime, you did get one for Pocket Now, right? Yep. OK. Um, and yeah, clearly, it's going to be a big part of Mobile World Congress. Yeah. So um, okay. do, you, do you mess with Xperia phones very often? Uh, I did features. You know me. And I like the cutesy stuff. So the last phone, the XZ, was it XZ3 or XZ2? I can't remember. I did um, 3D. Oh, that's right. A feature on 3D. What is it? 3D scanning. Mm -hmm. Face scanning. Face scanning. Yeah. I mean, it was fun. It's just that it's not as easy as they purport it to be. Like, literally, it was an afternoon of me and Chai just trying to get one scan right. <laughs> and, you know, it, look, it looked weird. It either looked weird or really, really cool. So oh, OK, fair enough. Uh, what was the last Xperia that Pocket Now reviewed? Do you remember? Oh, the XZ3 last week. Oh. <laughs> that was last week? Yeah, last week, oh. dude. I, I mean, I had it since October. I just didn't have the time. <laughs> you know what? We're all in that boat. Like, I'm finally over at JV. I, I'm finally doing um, the OnePlus 60. <laughs> <laughs> and the OnePlus 7 is like weeks out, apparently. Mm -hmm. Like, like people are just sort of uh, speculating that's going to be very soon. Um, anyway, so we have the uh, Sony Xperia. Um, the, and then we did talk about Xiaomi a little bit earlier. And mm -hmm. yes, they are doing media briefings at MWC or prior to it. Um, so obviously, we got to get in contact with whoever. Um, you know, the Mi Mix 3 is in, uh, is in my hands, at least. I have a Mi Mix 3 that I'm having fun with right now. Yeah, he's been like, he's been. What do you call that? He's been flipping the screen at everyone. Let me see if I have. Like it. I on. like literally at everyone. He put well, in okay. a sound effect that like so every time he flips it, it sounds like some swords are being drawn, and he's been flipping it at people's faces. He flipped that at my face, at his mom's face. <laughs> yeah, he's. <been> doing it. <laughs> it was funny the first like five times. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I kept doing it. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, remember to, the, just remember to do the same thing when somebody's mugging you. All right. Oh yeah, exactly. Just... But make it, make it, make it gunshots. I don't know if they have, but in any way, um, the Mix Three, which is going to be, um, I don't remember. The, the, you, you Pocket Now has a unit, right? Hmm? Did Pocket Now have a unit of the Mi Mix Three? You have it. Well, this was no. This was this was this is a JV unit technically. There was supposed to. They were supposed to give you our unit. Remember, I couldn't go to that Shanghai trip. Oh well, they only gave me one, so uh, I don't know what happened there. Um, yeah. But in any case, like okay, so potentially I'll do a dual review. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. well, maybe. Uh, but anyway, uh, the Mi Mix Three potentially over at um, MWC. There might be a five G version of this bad boy, and I have to say, I'm glad that there are certain there are certain phones that you are glad you don't review right away. Mm -hmm. This is one of them, because that. Did not happen until two weeks ago. The global oh, really? ROM finally went out, and MIUI uh -huh. uh, localized for stateside. It's actually really nice. Like what, so, what are the changes aside from the sound effect? Because that sound effect, like the the this is all phone, you need. But no, um, we've had that uh, effect I, from the other I, I did flip not, phones. I don't like MIUI. I God, it's. It's really smooth. Like I, I can see why people may not like it, but I have to say it's it's really smooth. It's it, it's looking quite nice. Um, and honestly, like there's certain. I'm not gonna say it's on the level of an Oxygen OS, but I get that sort of feeling of smoothness from it. And I and I kind of like. No, it. it's I don't like it visually. It's too cartoony for me. But then again, my, I can see that my my last uh my last uh, Xiaomi phone was the Mi Mix 2S, mm. which wasn't the worst. Um, like. That was a pretty that was a pretty great phone also. And again, like we were saying before, Xiaomi, one of the only phone manufacturers that actively uses ceramic. So you have ceramic right here. Um, nice. but anyway, this over new, at him. This new Mimix, wow, <laughs> Mimix. <laughs> this this particular Mimix is probably the first Mimix that I'm actually interested in because I've always had a problem with the camera being at the bottom. Oh yeah. It's like that we've will had, never oh God, be. Yeah, that was yeah. bad. That was yeah. terrible. We have, we've like, had that running before. They yeah. were like, flip the phone around. I'm like, right. <laughs> <laughs> Max. There is one problem with this though. Um, when, when, it's, when it's open like that, I can't clip a lens up here. It just won't fit. So no more wide angle front for me. So. Yes, but I mean, it's a small price to pay. For, the, for, for this. Yeah, babe. It's, it's, it's a fun you'll thing. You'll survive. You'll survive. Yeah, you'll, exactly. Life will go on. 
you are what you're part of the point one percent who use who, st who use clip on lenses. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, going from Xiaomi to uh -huh. yet another company that um, you know these these companies are ones that we didn't really see too often mm -hmm. at um, MWC. We, they would all they would they would be mm -hmm. they would have a presence at the show, but they wouldn't have like a booth. Yeah. Yet another one, Oppo. Oppo is going to be oh, showing I mean, up at technically MWC. it's not even at MWC. True, but they're going to be there, and yeah. I'm sure they're going to yeah. want to showcase it on the floor. Well, they're they're teasing something Zoom related, and did, did you remember that Periscope camera module that they showed off two years ago? Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. remember you were talking about Microsoft's slow death. This is and and how they they. Um, actually release stuff like this was what two years in the making though <laughs> i remember well, asking oppo every time they launch like what happened to your 10 times zoom though i know <laughs> you know? but I, I don't i don't blame them like the technology if you think about it we we barely get to see motorized uh selfie cameras on phones up until last mm -hmm. year yeah. um and you know I, I guess they needed to prove that they could mass produce the, that motorized system mm -hmm. um so I, I don't blame them. Like nobody, it's not like if anybody caught up and did it first than them. I feel I feel that it's a that it's a cool idea. I would rather use the same lens with the same aperture, um, and just zoom in and out. You know, use the mechanical portion of it than the other way around. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense that a ten times optical zoom would be called the find. Oh wait, I just clicked <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> okay, fine, that's true. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, Oppo might already be using a smartphone with this new technology, but they're kind of show off a they're they're potentially going to mm -hmm. show off a working prototype with later availability at MWC. I feel like so that 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 was at MWC two years ago, or was that Ifa? MWC two years ago. That I was remember, yeah, that I, was I remember because it was the time like their booth was like two like a block away from the Nokia booth, and it's when Nokia did that official launch of the retro yeah. phones. I remember, mm -hmm. yeah, this was my first ever MWC. I mean, I wasn't there, but the first MWC I you covered, covered yeah. and there was a tiny um, prototype. Like there was a, there were buildings and stuff, tiny little building for ants that <laughs> yeah. they tested the zoom yeah. on. Yeah, no, yeah. They, they they showed off a lot of stuff. Like I, I was there for a bit. I actually went twice to their booth. Uh, but the thing about it is, the phone was really thick. Like the the device mm. literally reminded me of the Razer phone. So mm. if, if you know Oppo, like Oppo, you know they don't do phones that thick. So obviously, I think that they've been refining ever since. Okay. All right. So one of our last stories for us, um, the, another big hitter. I mean, we're going to see something come out of uh, Huawei's camp. Mm -hmm. And Lord knows they have had a crazy year. So maybe yeah. they're going to pull out all the stops for MWC. I remember, I'll, know, I'll always remember the P10 launch. Mm -hmm. um, that was a crazy launch because yeah. they brought out a, that was when influencers were just becoming a thing. So they brought out so many Instagram slash YouTube people who had nothing to do with tech. <laughs> was this the one where they had um, they talked about matcha for so long, the Pantone color institute? Yeah, was this yeah, that, that was yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah, this was also my first coverage. I remember mm -hmm. um, sitting at HQ watching this, and I'm like, "What is going on?" This was remember this was my first major tech coverage, and I'm just like. Why are they talking about the color green for so long? Yeah. Like, what is a P10? What is a? That was. That they had. Was they, they 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 literally spent the entire press conference mm -hmm. uh, trying to convince us that green is a good color. Yeah. <laughs> no, like like I, I really I remember that P10. I missed that phone. That was such a. It good was a good phone. phone. Yeah. Um, it was a good and, that, phone. and I and I just love that experience of like being like, damn, I, like we didn't go to the press conference. Uh, and it was out of choice, like because uh, the previous two Huawei press conferences we couldn't get in there, and then we learned that they were giving out the Huawei Watch Two and the P10 at the event. And I'm like, damn it! And so I walk into their booth, and they were like, yeah, we realize you didn't join, but we've got your products here. And I'm like, oh, that's so nice of you. So nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> that, by the way, uh, just a tiny anecdote, and I'm not going to get into any details. That P10 launch was when I met uh, Lexi Pantera. So, Who's Lexi Pantera? Uh, well, I'm gonna let our audience Google. Who's um, Lexi you're welcome, yeah, audience. Do some oh, 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 I know, I know, I know who she is. Yeah, yeah, she's dope. She was really friendly too. And I think you have that's the Matebook 13 in your hands, isn't uh, it? This is a review that's coming out next week. Um, Same. Rather interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, God, the Matebook <clears throat> Pro was such a good computer. 
Yeah, it's still here. Like, can you believe? Can you believe that Sam's been editing everything in Spanish? Like, I gave him, like, I gave him my old MacBook Pro, and then the MacBook X Pro. He's not using an eGPU, and that thing still flies, man. Like, yeah. like he's like, no, I don't need that. I, I probably will need it. Like, it's like, yeah, it's a seven-minute render versus four. Like, I won't die in those three minutes. It's fine, you know. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know? the um, chroma key, full everything. Yeah. Um, the uh, the Maple Gex Pro great for for editing. I'm I'm super happy with it. You know, thus far, um, this is my, this is this and that MateBook 13, my foray into actual computing. So mm -hmm. it's great to be able to branch out a little bit. Anyway, right. we totally got off track here. Huawei potentially will come to MWC with their own foldable device, apparently. So um, I'm not surprised. Huawei has everything. <laughs> Huawei is just gonna be like, mm, I'm gonna do that too. I'm yeah. Sorry. A 5G foldable smartphone will make its debut. He said that while on stage announcing Huawei's Balong 5000 yeah. chipset. Um, yeah, and you know what? Like, <laughs> we maybe they've been working so hard to make their devices as sleek as possible because this one's not gonna be. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be a weird bulky foldable. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, 5G enabled with their own chipset, uh, which is obviously the alternative to everything that we've heard from Qualcomm. Yeah. And Qualcomm is like the, are you ready for 5G? It's coming, yeah. company. So, I mean, it's it's amazing how Huawei seems to be unfazed, just churning all these new and different things, despite all the stuff that that they've been going, going through. through. Yeah, like there was just an article on was it Time about how and what like the significance of that Huawei executive being arrested mm -hmm. the and apparently in China they call her a princess because this is literally the daughter of the Huawei um owner who's That's about the, to succeed the whole like when that person like passes or something yeah. no but the thing about it is it's just uh, political stuff i yeah. Yeah, it's it's not even worth wasting time on that because it's mm -hmm. just it, it. Once you dig that rabbit hole, it's like extremely complicated. And then, yeah. if you yeah. think about it, I, I find it funny how they're making so much uh, publicity over the adoption of five G when we've been using four G LT technology from Huawei and ZT for how many years? Mm -hmm. So it's like you're making a big deal out of five G now. <laughs> why right now? Here. Like why didn't you do that years ago? I mean. What powers are 4G LTE right now? Think yeah. about it. And yeah. we've had we've had a lot of these uh, we've had a lot of these discussions that basically come down to like there have to like there, there's a sort of like scapegoating happening. Yeah. So yeah. There's, there's a lot of that going on, but we're not going to get into it. This is pocket now, mm -hmm. not democracy now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Love it. But you know what? Um, I think that actually does it for all of our stories. So you know what? On that note. Uh, we're gonna go in and call it on this episode of the weekly. Um, I'm, I'm I'm reading off of our uh, script that might be from last week, but still kind of covers everything. Um, our theme music is now "Bloom" by Minerva, courtesy of a royalty-free license with Argo Fox. You can learn more about that song in the episode's description. You can follow the crew on Twitter. Our producer, who's been in the booth, is Jules Wong at Point Jules. Isa, right over here, is at Cisa said. That's S I S A S A I D. Jaime is, of course, Jaime underscore Rivera. Brandon, who left a little bit earlier. Hopefully the kid is good. Maybe just a bit of a cold, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, Brandon, miniman. And I am JV Tech Tea. You know me, I'm JV. I love tech and I love to drink me some tea. Paganau is at Paganau on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube in English and Espanol, where you can find more news on the Paganau Daily and Paganau Adadio every weekday. Catch up on what the weekly is talking about at pocketnow.com slash podcast. Also, make sure you make your voices heard by emailing us, podcast at pocketnow.com. We would love your feedback through reviews and ratings on Google, Apple, Spotify, Overcast, or wherever you may happen to be streaming us. Because without you, we wouldn't have been able to make the show for your eyes and ears for now seven years straight. All right, we've got another episode coming out next week, and we're going to be in our respective areas and booths for the next number of weeks leading up to MWC, where, of course, we'll have another special episode for you. So let's get that journey going together on the way to Barcelona. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.